Hello, it's Gordon here. Hopeful is well with you. And this Facebook Live I've called The First Arab Woman to Do What? And I'm talking about a, an Arab woman from Tunisia called Ons Jabour. And it's a sporting subject. It's a tennis subject. Ons Jabour has play, been playing at the Eastbourne Grass Tournament uh, Tennis. And this morning she was playing Joe Conta from Great Britain, the British number one. And by the way, I'm going to talk about the result. So if you haven't seen that match and you want to watch it later and you don't know the results, I'm going to give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Now then, On Jabur has beaten Joe Conta on grass in Eastbourne at the Eastbourne tournament, one of the pre-Wimbledon grass tournaments. And it's a big deal because Joe Conta is the British number one. She's in a fine run of form at the moment and people have got high hopes for her because a couple of years ago she got to the semi-final of Wimbledon and she just got to the semi-final of the French Open on clay. So high hopes. But she's been beaten this lunchtime in the last half an hour and I was watching it on television and to be honest, she got smashed off the court. She really didn't play very well. And I've spoken about Joe, Con Joe Conta in other videos, and I will speak more about her. This video, however, is about her opponent, on Jabour from Tunisia. Now, I've called this video, the first Arab woman to do what? And she's the first, I'll tell you what she is the first Arab woman to do. She's the, <laughs> she's the first Arab woman to get to a WTA tour event final, <laughs> which she did in Moscow a couple of years ago. Obviously, she's still in this event, so she might get to the final this time. But she did get to the final at an event in Moscow in the last couple of years. And she was the first Arab woman tennis player to do that. Now, is that a big deal? Why am I talking about that? Well. If you're not interested in sport or you're not interested in tennis, it's not a big deal at all. In the big scheme of things, it means absolutely diddly squat. But to On Jabour and to Arab women and Tunisian women, it means a huge deal because she's the first. It's groundbreaking. It's trailblazing. No one has done it before. Massive, massive, massive. And I found all this by listening to the commentators as I was watching the television because there's some fantastic BBC commentators who they don't just waffle in amongst the tennis. They put out some really interesting stuff and I, I love soaking up the information. And Anjabur is ranked 62 in the world. Joe Conta is currently ranked number 19 in the world. So although there's a, there's a big gap, it's not a massive gap. So... It wasn't a huge surprise, I, I guess. But the commentators were saying the usual stuff, like, OK, she's now number 62 in the world, but un unless you get in the top 100 in the world rankings in tennis, the money situation is bleak. Very, very bleak, because it, you won't get any sponsorship at all if you're outside the top 100. If you don't get any sponsorship, you've got no extra cash coming in apart from what you win in the tournaments. And if you're outside the top 100 in the world, you're always going to face the seeds and you're obviously not doing that well in the tournaments anyway. Otherwise, you'd be in the top 100. Does that make sense? So you've got no money. But you've got to pay for your accommodation. You've got to pay for your travel. You've got to pay for your coach and your trainers. And the less money you've got, the less you can spend on the coach and the trainers and accommodation and travel. So it all becomes massively, massively difficult. Now, generally speaking, the people at the very top layer where the money is huge, but it's that wafer thin layer, they've all gone through that. So it's, it is, that is a classic goal achievement point. The people at the top, most of them, not all of them, but most of them have gone through that and have gone through it from a young age. So if you want to get to the top, you better be prepared to do the same. Now in this case, I'm talking about tennis, but it applies, doesn't it? In any of the key areas of life, health, 
wealth, career, relationships, lifestyle. You've got to put in the word, you've got to be prepared to go on the learning curve, and you've got to be prepared for it to be difficult. And in sport, particularly in individual sport, there's no guarantees. There's no guarantees of success at all. But let's come back to On Jabur being the first Arab woman to get to a WTA Tour Final. And this is a point I've made many, many times before and will be making many, many times again. And I'm making it today. Instead of the video that I had planned to do today, by the way, I decided to do this video just literally after watching the tennis, which is only just finished. She's the first woman to get to a WTA final, first Arab woman. And the point I make is, whatever your goal is, in those five key areas of life, health, wealth, career, relationships, and lifestyle, whatever your goal may be, are you the first person to ever have that as a goal? Or would you be the first person to ever achieve that? Is it possible that you're the first? Well, yes, it's possible you're the first because look at Andrew Burr, the first Arab woman to get to your WTA final. People are still doing firsts all the time. So yes, it's possible. But is it probable? Is it probable that your goal, you're the first person to set that goal and that you would be the first person to achieve it? No, it probably isn't the case. It's probably the case, unless you're going to surprise me with a, an unusual goal, it's probably the case that someone else has already done it. And you know what that means? If someone else has already done it, the knowledge is there about how to do it. So taking it from a theory or a concept or an idea, someone has actually done it in the real world. So the knowledge is out there. Obviously, the more people that have done it, the more knowledge is out there. <laughs> the lots of people that have done it, lots of knowledge is out there about how to get to this goal. And there could be lots of different ways to get there. And I've spoken before about the internet being what I call a staggering wealth of abundance and opportunity. I'm recording this video on my Samsung phone, unbelievable technological opportunity. And on that same device, most of the information that humankind has ever known is probably available to me on that device. Staggering, staggering. I might have to pay for that information, but you'd be amazed how much information you can get for, or you won't be amazed, because we all know that you can get loads of information for free on the internet. So if lots of people have done your goal and there's lots of information about different routes to get to that goal and you can get a lot of that information for free, some of it you might have to pay for, but that probably includes coaching as well. Then the next question is, well, what's, what's stopping you? Because if people have done it and you know how they've done it, which means that you know what the next step is or you can work out what the next step is, what's stopping you? Now you might say, well, nothing is stopping me. I'm actually trying. I'm taking steps and I'm making progress and I'm dealing with the obstacles. In which case, great, superb, <laughs> super great smashing. I'm talking about if you're, you've got this goal and you know the information and you're still thinking, well, I'm not getting anywhere, but you haven't taken any action. <laughs> One of what I call the four magic words beginning with A, action. Combined with one of the other four magic words beginning with A, ask, <laughs> because that information will be there about possible ways to get to your goal, about the possible, what the, might, what the possible next step might be. <laughs> Easy for me to say. So yes, I hope you like that message. And I'm, I'm so, today I, was, I had a couple of videos that I was gonna do. I was gonna do a video about Tony Hancock. And I was gonna do a video about hashtag Wealth Wednesday. 
which was suggested as a as a thread in this group. And in fact, I've started a thread today in this group, hashtag Wealth Wednesday, suggested by uh, Jenny Schmall. After, funnily enough, I got that suggestion about a hashtag Wealth Wednesday after asking in this group about what people might like to see or what people might thought would be a good idea. And I got some suggestions and that was a, su a suggestion back from Jenny that I immediately liked and thought was gonna be a good idea. So I had planned to do a video about hashtag Wealth Wednesday. I was gonna do a video about Tony Hancock, but they can wait because having seen the tennis this morning, I thought, oh, that is a point that I'm gonna make right now because it is a current event. It couldn't be more of a current event because the tennis match only finished within the last half an hour, something like that. And how's that for an opportunity that the internet provides? I can be watching something, listening to the commentary and think, ooh, that's a great point. I wanna put my spin on that message. I wanna put it out there to the world. And I can put it out there in live moving pictures in full color to be seen anywhere around the world by anyone who's got an internet connection. Unbelievable opportunity and abundance that we have around us. And we can use that to get to our goals. And no, you don't have to be the first person to do it. So I hope you like that message. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below this video. Do you watch the tennis? Do you watch the sport? I'd never heard of On Javour before. Had you ever heard of it? You might be more of a tennis geek than I am. <laughs> Signing off for now, wishing you as ever health and happiness, and I'll speak to you again soon.